heard of the great resignation that has become the trend since the pandemic, and we continue to feel the impact of it, especially here in New York City. That's right. Take a look right here at these numbers, okay? Over the last two years, the city's full-time workforce has dropped by more than 19,000 people. There are currently 21,000 city job vacancies. Many of these are in agencies that provide some of the city's essential services. And joining us to discuss how this is really impacting you, the New Yorker, on a day-to-day -day basis is New York City Controller Brad Lander. So good to see you, Mr. Lander. Thanks for coming back. Great to see you, Dan and Hazel. Thanks for inviting me. So let's talk about some of these numbers right, that we just put up. They're from the state controller, but you also did a deep dive into staffing at city agencies. What did you find? And really, which agency would you say is facing the most crippling shortages? So that's right. We looked not just agency by agency, but at key titles. So, for example, at the Department of Buildings, 29% of our building inspectors are vacant. Or at Cyber Command, the folk that protects city agencies and your data from hacking 36% vacancies because those are tech workers. And a lot of those tech workers, as you say, during the pandemic, found that they could get better paying jobs and fully remote jobs since at the city, they've got to be five days a week. So it's not surprising we've got 30% vacancy at Cyber Command, 29% vacancy at Department of Buildings, 29% vacancy for the folks who are creating new affordable housing by getting our subsidy dollars out. The mayor talked about the need for affordable housing, but if a third of your affordable housing workforce is in there, of course that process is moving much slower and producing many fewer affordable units. Now, what about the F the NYPD, uh, FDNY, EMS? Are they included in the report? And if so, do, where do they stand in, in terms of staffing there? So interestingly, uniformed agencies um, and actually the, uh, the Department of Education teachers are much lower. So at the fire department, it's only a 2.7% vacancy rate for firefighters. but mechanics at the fire department have very high vacancy rate so the folks who are making sure the trucks are good to go and the firefighters are ready uh, we looked at a national report that says it's positions that are more competitive in the private sector right there's not private sector firefighters but there are private sector mechanics cyber workers uh and housing underwriters so city agencies also like sanitation and corrections, they were hard hit by COVID related shortages, right? It took them a little bit to get back up and running. Are they still trying to get back to those pre pandemic staffing levels? What's going on there? That's right. So, correction actually, sanitation is doing very well. I have to give Commissioner Jesse Tish credit, or something's going on there. We've got the lowest vacancies of any agency at sanitation. Fire uh, police is higher than usual, but still at about 4%. Correction is the highest of the uniformed uh, agencies. It is still more than double pre-pandemic vacancies. Um, uh, and teachers is at about 7%. Um, so the citywide average overall is 8%. What we, where the big vacancies are, are in those mayoral agencies, a lot of which are still absolutely critical for public safety and public health. Uh, we've got some child support workers where almost half of them are out. 45% vacancies in some key early childhood uh, education positions. Um, and that's really where in those mayoral agencies, non-pedagogical, non-uniform, that the big, big vacancies are. Are there enough qualified people, though, to take those positions? Well, look, obviously, as you said, this is an issue everywhere for every employer is having trouble hiring. But states and localities are having a harder time all across the board. And in New York City, we then imposed a hiring freeze on agencies and have continued to make it take steps. You know, if you talk to commissioners off the record, they'll just all tell you that the bureaucracy, the steps they're forced to go through, partly because uh, the city's trying to save money um, and partly just the history of a kind of clunky, what we say, kludgy bureaucracy um, is making it much harder for the city commissioners than it is even in the private sector yeah. in New York City. So one of the recommendations you made, right, to, to moving, move this forward is to hire something called a chief talent officer to oversee recruitment and attrition. So how is that recommendation being looked at? Who, who actually makes that final determination? I hope so. Some of your uh, viewers will have seen the call for the rat czar this week. Yes. Yeah. I love the idea of the rat czar. We need somebody focused on helping beat the rats. But you know what? We also need somebody focused on helping our city agencies hire for key positions, um, cut through some of that kludge, have some strategies for hiring, not just at the bottom of a range, but maybe at the middle of a range if a person is qualified. And of course, it is time to look at hybrid work models in those positions where we can and a chief talent officer could help City Hall and our city agencies do all those things. All right. New York City Controller Brad Lander, thanks again for being with us this morning. Always appreciate your time. Great to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.